Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Varun and I'm a street musician from Bombay. What I do is I go busking around in public places or parks and I play this instrument and educate people about it and create awareness about this instrument. And like I said, I usually do this on the streets of Bombay. So I'm not really used to this setting. I'm used to a lot of traffic noise, cars zipping by, people, you know, coming all around me. And occasionally I get hassled by the cops, you know, whenever they see a crowd around me. They would come up to me and stop me from playing this instrument since I don't have a license to do it in public. Uh, once I play the instrument for the cops though, they tend to kind of like it and ask me more about this instrument. Now, I, I feel the reason for that is because everyone is listening to this instrument all the time. Right from childhood, we've all been listening to this unique musical instrument. I'm sure everybody in this room here has heard this instrument uh, you know, on TV. Whenever you watch anything funny on TV or if you're watching Tom and Jerry on Cartoon Network, every time Tom Cat has a failed attempt at catching Jerry the mouse, you're going to listen to this. Right? Yeah. So that's what happens when people listen to it. They're like, I've heard this sound somewhere, I'm not sure where it was, but that, that's what attracts people towards this instrument and they come up to me and ask me different questions about this instrument. So let me just tell you a bit about this instrument. It's a 1,500 year old instrument which is found all around the world, especially in Europe and Asia. In other instruments such as the harmonica have been invented and the Indian harmonium have come into existence because of this tiny instrument. So if this guy was never there, we would have no harmonica, we would have no harmonium. Uh, in India, this, this particular one that I'm playing is a Rajasthani Morchang and it comes, uh, this tribe called the Laggas from Rajasthan who are entertainers, dancers, uh, who used to sing and dance for the royal families of our country, used to play to entertain them. Now, how the instrument is played is, it's a tiny instrument made out of metal, it can be made out of wood, bone or any other kind of material that you can think of. I've started making it out of plastic, out of credit cards and it works fine. So what happens is the string, if you look at the instrument, there's this tiny string that vibrates. Now, if you look at a guitar or you look at a grand piano or any kind of percussive instrument, when you hit the instrument, there's a resonating body made out of wood or metal or whatnot, which resonates and creates the sound. Here, the string vibrates, the sound goes into my mouth and my mouth is the resonating body. So the guy who's playing the instrument is not separate from the instrument at all. So I am the instrument and the instrument is me, is what you need to understand if you want to play this instrument. Also what you can do is you can add breath to the instrument. You can suck air in and out and make different patterns with your breath. So you got to know a little bit of pranayam which is breath control in order to make music. So although this sounds like a funny sounding instrument, it's a very very serious instrument and it's not at all a toy and we need to be, you know, more open to it and not just say that it's something that came back then. So let's not look at it now. The thing about the instrument is, right now nobody's really playing it in India. When I went to hunt this instrument in Rajasthan, I didn't find nobody in Rajasthan who know, knew about this instrument. It was a real pain trying to trace down people who were manufacturing it. And I realized that something needs to be done. We, we need to tell people about this instrument. We need to teach them how to play it. So I started doing this online. I started pe teaching people how to play this instrument online. And I've got people from Spain, from Africa, asking me questions about how you do this. Um, and, and I reply back, and it's a real good experience. It's someone so far away uh, from, from me. I'm here in Bombay, and this guy from Spain or from Africa wants to learn a tribal Indian instrument. And it's just a real great experience that I have when I explain something to them. Now, how did I learn any of this? When I was learning this instrument, I had nobody to teach me nothing about it. So what do I do? What do I do? I really want to learn this instrument. We go on to YouTube.com, right? You can learn anything on YouTube. So I went on to YouTube and found out how to play this instrument. Now, everybody on YouTube is playing this instrument in a, 
in a way that it was played 1,500 years back. It's a folk instrument, and everybody's still playing folk music on it. So I said to myself, let me learn folk music, let me listen to folk music, and somehow I started playing folk music. However, since I had no teachers, what I realized, I had no methods to follow. I had no rules to follow. I had nobody to tell me you're going wrong, son. Just stop doing that. So I kept making these mistakes and over and over and over again, taught myself how to play this instrument. Now, uh, since it's a portable instrument, I just fit it in my pocket and wherever I was going, I was playing this instrument. So if I'm at the bus stop waiting for the bus, I would take out the instrument and start playing it. If I'm at the railway station waiting for the train or in the train compartment, anywhere and everywhere, I started playing this instrument. What I realized then is when I move my tongue back and forth, I'm getting different sounds from the instrument, right? So I'm pounding on this thought, is it okay for me to speak into the instrument? What if I just keep this instrument on my mouth, strike the string and say whatever I have to say? And just when I was thinking about this thought, a little kid at Andheri station just ran by me, screaming, chai lelo, chai lelo, chai lelo, chai lelo. And I'm saying, wow, that sounds like a nice rhythm. To me as a musician, that sounds takadimi, 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 right? And then the kid started hearing, bhajia lelo, bhajia lelo, bhajia lelo, bhajia lelo. I said to myself, let me just put the two rhythms together. And this is how it sounded then. Thank you very much. So this is when I realized that you can do anything with this instrument. As long as there is nobody telling you this is wrong and you can't do it, anyone can do anything. So I started playing whatever came to my head. And what came to my head was not folk music, because I didn't grow up listening to folk music. Nobody really listens to folk music here in Bombay anymore. We listen to urban music, music like dubstep, drop and bass, electronic music, EDM music. So I thought, why not play that kind of music? Why stick to folk music? Why not play drum and bass with it? And this is what drum and bass would sound through it. <laughs> So this is what drum and bass sounds through the mode chant. Yeah. Uh, I swear if that sounded, uh, uh, it's a real sad fact that I, I feel real sad when I say this, that this sound might not exist for somebody in the next generation to listen to. This instrument is slowly heading towards extinction because we don't look at music instruments as something that can get extinct. If you go up to a musician and tell him, you know what, the tiger is getting extinct and we need to save it. Everybody will say, yeah, the tiger is getting extinct. Yeah, there are certain plant species get, that get extinct. But nobody is looking at a musical instrument saying that maybe the generation after me or the generation after that will never get to hear this sound. Unless we do make an effort to save this instrument from extinction, this instrument would be extinct in the near future. And how do we make an effort to save this instrument? It's very simple. Just pick the instrument up and start playing it wherever and wherever you can. Right? So teach yourself how to play this instrument. There, there are no rules to it. Uh, since, since this was uh, an Indian folk instrument, Indian traditional instruments like the tabla or the sitar, there are certain set of rules that you need to follow and you can't just break them. You need to follow them once you've learned everything you have to. Then you can go about breaking these rules. But in a folk instrument, there is no written record of it. There, there are no written lessons for it. There are no gurus for it. So anybody who's picking this instrument up, maybe he'll come up and playing you know, something completely different from what I'm playing right now. So what I would do is I would want to demonstrate uh, what I call urban folk music, because I add sounds that I hear in my everyday life, traffic noises or whatnot, and somehow try to merge it up with modern day music that I've been listening to. Um, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Oh, you're going to go. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much.